are on my chart here, let's say it's right here, well, I could say, well, what, what degrees is it up and what degrees is it across? It's across this many. This will be a time component, number of hours or whatever. And then up from where you're standing, that number right there is going to be a degree. So like uh, for um, that one that we said was in the Big Dipper, it was like 56 degrees up and then 11 hours over. Okay, could have a 24-hour deal. It was over about half of that, right? So that gives you kind of an idea of how that works. Now there's a separate system that you can measure celestial coordinates, and that is using the idea of altitude and azimuth. Okay? And altitude, the problem that, that this kind of has is that um, because the stars are moving, it only tells you where it is at a particular moment of time. Altitude is just what degree in terms of angle, like you get like a protractor type deal, and you'd say how many degrees is it, 30 degrees up, and then, um, so you've got to know up, and then you've got to know um, its degree in terms of where it is from, um, the, and that's called the azimuth, and that is the angular distance along the horizon, okay? And it's always measured um, from the north towards the east along the horizon. Let's take a look at a cool web page that helps us show. So here we have um, a, a star. So if you've got a star right here and I move it around and say, well, there's the north star, what you can do is, and if you look right here, the azimuth is 128.4 degrees and the altitude is 64. So you'd have to measure from where you're standing up 64 degrees and have the azimuth be 128 degrees. So it's just a degree, degree thing. And I can move it around. I can find the star right here. And this would be 226.9 for the azimuth and an altitude only 14.2. So the angle between here and that's 14.2. And I can move this around right here to kind of get an idea where that star would be from the perspective of our guy, right? So we can move this around, and this can tell us where a particular star is. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's another method. But, of course, the star is constantly moving. The nice thing about the, um, the uh, right ascension method, if it says it's two hours, one hour from now it will be one more hour past. So you, you just change the hour. It's not going to change the other thing. So if we go back and look at our starry night here, actually it, it gives us both uh, coordinate systems. You might also know that it says, oops, I lost it again. It will say azimuth. Got to highlight it just perfect. You can see it will say azimuth 318 degrees and some change, altitude 31. And as time goes on, so if I push play right here, pause, it's going to change its number. So anyways, this is what the coordinate system does as we look at um, stars. And lastly, let's talk about planetary configurations. Well, you've probably heard of the, the stars um, coming into conjunction and all those kinds of things. Well, they do conjunct. That means they get together. There's actually several kinds of conjunctions. This right here is the Earth right here. You should copy this down in your notes. There are inferior conjunctions. Now, inferior conjunction is when the planet, this is only going to happen for Mercury and Venus, um, the, is between the sun and the earth, as you can see. Now, a superior conjunction all right, is when they are on opposite sides of the, of the sun. So um, if this was uh, Venus right here, let's just say for the sake of argument, it's Venus, this could be Mercury. He's on the opposite side of the sun called a superior. And you also have this western elongation and eastern. That kind of makes sense, west and east. All right. You can also have that for what we call the superior planets. The superior planets are those planets that are away from the Earth, um, Mars and Jupiter and things like that, and they are further away. It's in opposition when it's uh, behind the sun. Pardon me in front of the sun, this way, and if it's behind the sun, it's called a superior conjunction, and we can still have the western and the eastern elongation. They tend to be brightest when, of course, they are closest to us, but not in the path of the sun, where the sun would blur them out. So actually, typically what, what uh, people, uh, or what is said, not just what people, it's true, um, is the brightest, the stars are brightest, or pardon me, the planets are brightest when they are in their elongation stage. Possibly, you know, right here too. But they can't be too close to the sun, like either they're really close here, this inferior conjunction, like Venus would be. But the sun would be in the way it would cause some problems. So those are um, the different comp conjunction. And then there's another point here, and that's called opposition. Opposition is when they are opposed to us and they're behind us. So I think, think drawing this picture is all you're going to need to do to understand the idea of conjunctions and things like that. Well, that's kind of our quick understanding of backyard astronomy.